Welcome back to Super Banker, and no prizes for guessing who the Super Banker is. Mr. Aditya Puri is my guest. Uh, uh, Mr. Puri, Ache Din. Many CEOs I speak to say, you know, the vibes are good, but on the table, I have nothing to tell you that I'll grow faster next quarter. I wouldn't, nec wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Let's let, let put it differently, mm -hmm. Lata. If we step back, nobody has a magic wand that it's going to happen overnight. So say we were at 4.7, we had low-hanging fruit and we have a lot of actions that have to be taken for the long run. If we take the low-hanging fruit in terms of getting the stuck projects going, getting faster decision-making, getting clearer policies, restricting expenditure and defining what's going to happen plus a stable mm -hmm. rupee, I think that's happened. So we probably touched the bottom and we are recovering. So we expect this fiscal the growth to be around five and a half percent. We really don't expect new investment demand. There are some brownfields, mm -hmm. so like the motorcycle guys expanding yeah. or the consumer durable guys expanding. But we don't really expect greenfield investment for at least another 12 months because even with the change sentiment and everybody being positive, from the time you conceive a project to the time it hits GDP, it's going to be 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. So next year, we are seeing it around 6%, and 7% or thereabouts only comes year after next. The latest uh, RBI numbers for the uh, sector itself is still 13 something. They went down to 11.8, so but I think 13 is about the normalized number. Okay. I think you will see pick up in credit growth every quarter, uh, okay. but so not we a are, dramatic. We are, we are done with the worst, you think? I think so. Further contraction is not. Uh, absolutely not. Okay. The other flip side of contraction really is asset quality. Uh, what's your sense about asset quality? Well, before that, uh, let me first ask you, uh, what do you make of this willful default clause and the strengthening of hands of bankers? Uh, will that be a, a great stick to uh, uh, wield and maybe arm twist uh, borrowers? I think a combination of the statement of intent mm. by the governor as well as the Ministry of Finance that bankers' money is to be returned is the first step, which is great. They followed it up with action. Uh, RBI came up with the stressed asset one, stressed asset two, basically sending a signal, we are monitoring what you're doing, and we want, one, the banks to recognize problems faster, and two, to resolve them faster. Yeah. The third, the statement that nobody has a divine right to continue with uh, the project. If he can't run it, he has to move out, and his equity is to be written off, according to Chapter 11. I think you're seeing that. So you're seeing the willful default examples. You're seeing people selling off their assets so that they can pay loans. You're seeing people accessing the capital market so that they can pay. I would say we're seeing progress. We will probably need to tighten further. Mm. Oh, yes, absolutely, because ultimately uh, we need a much lower level of NPAs going forward mm -hmm. and a clear understanding and quicker resolution. I think they're determined to do that, and that's a combination of change in procedures, law, and faster action. Okay. Well, what about market development itself? He certainly tried a lot in terms of market development in the 1 to 14 day uh, term money market. Uh, uh, do you think all that is working? Is he in the right direction? Will we have a better yield curve uh, sometime soon? One day. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let's put it. See, what is there is that he's trying to see whether banks would, banks have more than one day money. They have 15 day money. Yes. Uh, but some, most of them only want to deal in the call market. Mm. So he's been trying this 14 days, 30 days, maybe wants to extend it to 90 days. But 90%, I, I don't know the exact, but mm. a large percentage is just a bank dealing with the RBI. Yes. Within each other, that dealing has not, not started. Sir. But he'll have to take a number of steps before it will reach. But if you're talking about a debt market, then I think we are a long way off from a debt market. What what more pieces do you want? Everybody has, uh, uh, you know, uh, stated, reiterated their allegiance to creating a bond market. I have heard it ad nauseum for 12 years. Yeah. But uh, what's the piece that's missing? I think it took Dr. Reddy to tell me this in Hong Kong. I'll tell you mm -hmm. the piece that is missing. The problem is the fiscal deficit of the government. Mm -hmm. So if you take household savings at about 12% invested in financial assets, corporate at about 8 to 10%, the fiscal deficit of center and state combined is 10%. Yes. So there's very little left over. You add to that the fact that uh, most of this gets tied in SLR, which is held and biased, so there is no trading, and so you can't have price discovery. 
You add to that, since 90% of the issuance is government uh, securities, they only issue 10 years. Mm -hmm. You So 75% is in 10 years, 15 securities have 90%. Part of it is in held to maturity, and the government deficit is not reducing. Now, with the help of a lower oil price, hopefully greater divestment, we better bring, if we bring the fiscal deficit to 3% or below, then I remember uh, discussing with Dr. Reddy, uh, at that point of time, there was a time actually that given the deposit growth, there would not have been enough government security. Yes. So, and you add on top of that, is the key question Mr. Dr. Reddy asked me, and he says, you've written all this mechanics about a debt market. Well, Mr. Puri, where's the investor? It's not as if there's money sloshing around. All surplus money, term money, is being utilized, whether it's insurance or pension or any other long term, between the fiscal deficit and other instruments. An arbitrage-free yield curve uh, and a proper issuance of government securities and trading starts from that fiscal deficit. It's really very far away. Do you think infra bonds will be some kind of a, a infra, bridge? Uh, infra bonds are very good. I mean, infra bonds is, I think, the RBI recognizing that if you're not going to have a bond market for two to three years and the banks are going to be financing infra, why go round and round the multiple bush creating IFL and all, yeah. all those people yeah. and then the bank funding it? So they're basically saying we'll allow you to earn money without SLR CRR so that it, the price is right. Mm. So you might get something of a bond market because ultimately we'll people trust a bank issue. CDs have a better market than any other instrument. So you will have a bond market instead of corporate bonds. We get a curve, you think, because no, then it will become. Instead of corporate bonds being 10% of the market, they'll become 15% of the market. Okay, you'll have that many more <laughs> bank bonds. Okay. And so, but unless you have an arbitrage free sovereign yield curve, and from the yield curve, you need to create the derivatives, and the derivatives can't be created on a simple bond, but one step at a time. Okay. Well, uh, 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 inflation. I mean, are you hopeful that now all the pieces are falling in peace, uh, falling in place? You know, three, four years ago, or for the past three, four years, an onion or a tomato or one vegetable potato inflation could easily become a generalized food inflation and then a general inflation. It's happened four times. And now the governor is insistent that I want to fight and win this battle once and for all. You think the ingredients are in place that this time around we are all likely to win? I hope so. Further, God has also helped us. Brent is down to sub-100. So yes. that's going to be one help. But this food one, I'm really not sure anybody knows what happens in these two. It's just those two, three months it picks up. So they're making all the effort. I think the government, uh, the, the governor's in the right trajectory in saying, look, we've got to lick it. If we don't lick it, there's no point carrying on and coming up with other measures and saying this will be controlled. We have to have a clear idea. Uh, he's reached the 8% on CPI, 6% on WPI. And I think with just oil not going up, you'll probably reach 7. And then mm -hmm. if food comes right, you will reach the 6. Okay. But you would insist that, uh, uh, I mean, would you agree with his position that we have to win this battle once and for all? I agree with both his positions, actually. Not only that we have to win this battle, I don't think the impediment to investment today is a 25 basis point cut in the policy rate. Okay. Interest rate is not the key. There are a whole lot of other things which you are aware of. I can repeat them if you want, but it'll be a waste of time. So I don't, I agree with both his statements that it is not the impediment. And in any case, as of today, we've got uh, the call rate is lower than the repo rate. So there's enough money in the market. So what are we talking about? Why do we keep focusing again and again on interest rate? Can we get our infrastructure, our environment, our coal, and all of that sorted out? And I show you with a good governor who's respected all over the place. I just came back <laughs> from London and uh, Tokyo. Uh, the monetary policy is in good hands and is not the crucial part for the revival as yet. To be fair, uh, in the previous policy, the government did not make that usual uh, statement like a broken record that the governor has not cut rates. I hope uh, they stay in sync with him uh, in subsequent policies as well. You know, this infra bonds gave us the idea that, you know, HDFC could issue a lot of infra bonds if it became a bank like IDFC is expected to. Uh, you have said that clearly that infra bonds makes it attractive. What should we assume? I mean, how many years must we wait before this giant can become one and actually become the biggest player in the country, which it needs to be? See, we've always said, this is not a new issue, we've always said 
doesn't HDFC, HDFC Bank merger make sense from a business point of view? I think so. Mm. Are there regulatory constraints? Yes. With the infra bond, we have made progress, but we haven't solved all the problems. So I think a few more regulatory constraints on the static balance sheet of HDFC, if that were exempted, I think you would see it fast. Mm. Uh, at the moment, it's not on the table. Okay, but uh, you know, one of the fears of the investors that now that you're going to be there for another six years for sure, actually the merger gets postponed because there are too many good men in the organization and therefore merging will, you know, probably so somebody will, will not be around. Therefore, I, uh, actually your, uh, uh, you know, your ex the extension of your tenure is seen as postponement of merger. Good analysis? Very bad analysis. <laughs> Why? Let's say there's place for all and even the place at the top, no issue. Okay. That is the least of the issues. Okay. We are very clear if it comes about how it will be run. Unfortunately, we need some help. Mm. And with the day we get the help, I assure you the hypothesis that you have drawn out that it was wrong will be proven to you. Okay. Well, I, can you just time? I mean, do you definitely need changes in the law before the merger happens? Yes. Or do you think that you know you will have a sufficient number of infra bonds? In we just need RBI to give a few concessions. Okay, which you cannot be very sure. If IDFC happens, yeah. and you know for a fact that IDFC got these these concessions, will then then we will look at it, and if it makes sense, we will do it. Now, since you broached uh, uh, the Raghuram Rajan issue first, uh, how would you rate uh, uh, the uh, the first year? What is the hit and what is the miss? You want me to rate the governor? Why not? You must be joking. <laughs> okay. Let me put it this way. I respect Mr. Bila, uh, Bimal Jalan and I'll go by his judgment. Which is? Which was a 10. Okay. <laughs> yes. He said 10 on 10 on the channel. Okay. I agree with you. Ah, then? Okay. All right. Uh, well, you're playing it safe. He's a regulator. I, I agree. I, I, I think wasn't joking. not to play it safe. <laughs> okay. Let Don't me go, go by his rock star image. Huh? He's a serious man. No, I agree. So you better play it safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Lord. On the Super Banker. Thank you.